Hey guys, welcome back to Popo's Woodwork. So it's been a long time since I've done a woodworking video and really not my fault, it's the lumber's fault because as you all know, the price of lumber has gotten astronomical. So uh, the things that I do, people, it's a, it's a want, not a need. So they don't wanna pay the extra money for it. So it's really slowed me down. But today I have a project I'm doing, which is a dog bed, as you can tell by the thumbnail on this video. So <clears throat> believe it or not, my lumber list is, let me show you this. I bought a, this is the premium pine, so it doesn't have any knots from Lowe's, but I bought a, a one by four, and this is two foot long. And then I bought a 20 inch wide, let me throw this down. I bought a 20 inch wide, 48 inch long, so 20 by four feet piece of project panel that y'all see me use a lot in my videos. And then over here on my table saw, I have a one by six, no cor correction, it's a one by eight by eight foot long. So these three pieces of wood, along with some stain and uh, the feet that I'm gonna put on the bottom of the dog bed was $142. Probably you rewind about eight months ago, I probably could have got it all for about 60 but it is what it is. So anyway, I'm gonna quit talking. I'm gonna get to cutting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna, I'm gonna size it up, try to try to go by the sizes that the lady give me. I'm gonna go ahead and get it all cut. Then I'm gonna stain it first. And once it's, the stain dries, then we're gonna get to putting it together. So let me get to cutting it down to the sizes I need and we'll, we'll get to putting this thing together. Okay, so the customer wants this thing at 36 inches, the overall 36 inches long. So what I'm doing, I've already cut the project panel and I forgot to film it. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done the video. So I'm getting ready to cut, I'm gonna get ready to cut this piece. This is gonna be the back and two sides because they're gonna be really tall. Then you're gonna have the small front where the dog can step in and out. So basically what I did is this wood right here is three quarters of an inch thick. So you take the 36 and then you minus 0.75 then minus 0.75 because that's going to be your two pieces on the end which comes out to 34 and a half inches so that's how big you got to cut the bed platform and this is this is going to be i'm getting ready to cut the the uh back section first now rather and so that's how long that's got to be that way when you add those two side rails and all that it's going to make it 36 inches but uh so basically th this is all i got to go on so this was the uh this was her schematics, and uh, which I do have a picture that we got online too that helps. But she wants it 36 inches, 30, I cannot talk, save my life. She wants it 36 inches long, 19 inches wide, and then 11 inches from the floor to the very top of the bed. But anyhow, so I'm gonna go ahead, that's what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna cut this piece down to 34 and a half to match the, the platform itself, and then, uh, then we're gonna do the rails. The rails are gonna be actually 19 inches because they're, I'll show you, it'll make sense in a minute, but the rails are gonna be 19 inches on each side. So let me get to cutting. All right, so now, I have the two side rails. This is gonna be the back. This is gonna be the front, which I, I forgot, to, forgot to film that too. The front is 34 and a half. So the, the wide back rail, 34 and a half inches long. The front rail, 34 and a half inches long, which is that four inch, you know, this, this, the skinny one. All right. So the two side rails is gonna be 19 inches long. And of course, the, let me grab this project panel and show you. Hang on a second. All right, so here's the project panel. This is just that glued together stuff. It comes in plastic at Lowe's. So this is actually 20 inches wide. It needs to be 19 inches wide. So uh, I got to rip it. So I'm actually going to have to, and I hate doing it, but I'm going to have to dig my table saw out. So I'm going to take an inch off of this. So uh, just bear with me. Let me get my table saw out, get this off, and then. Like I said, I'm getting it all pre-cut, and once it's cut, I'm going to stain it. Because here's here's what I run into when I'm doing when I'm doing furniture. Just a quick tip, or you can fast forward this if you don't want to listen to me jabber. I'm going to use glue, of course, to help hold this together because glue dries stronger dries stronger than wood. 
but if you stain after you glue, if you don't get all that glue off of it, you're gonna see a difference. It's gonna be a discoloration of the stain. And uh, I hate it. it, it drives me crazy. So I want this piece of furniture, it's gonna be a lot of people seeing it. So I want this piece of furniture to look like it was literally store-bought or better than store-bought. So I'm gonna pre-stain everything. Matter of fact, I'm gonna probably mock it all together and then use my quarter inch round over bit and I'm gonna round over all the edges that's not gonna meet up with each other, then stain it. Just kind of go ahead and get all my finishing stuff out the way, then stain it, then put it together. That way, when I go to glue it, the stain's already there. You ain't gonna have that, that creamy looking discoloration where the stain runs over to the glue because they'll lie to you. They say that, that you can stain over glue bull crap. It looks like crap. I've tried them all, it looks like crap. If you don't get all the glue off, the stain ain't gonna do, you gonna tell the difference. I wish I had something here to show you because I used to do it all the time and it drives me nuts. But anyway, so that's enough of this. I'm going to get my table saw out and cut this down and we're gonna move on along with this. So just stick with me if you ain't bored or tired of me yet. Okay, so here's the mock-up and i cut this wrong like i said i cut the size down to 19 inches because she wants it 19 inches overall and i had cut this down to 19 inches well what that did was it made my boards not meet like this so i totally forgot to take an account for the uh thickness of the wood so this ended up having to be cut down to 17 and a half that way it makes the it makes your edges mesh up here so this is the little mock-up this is basically where we're going with it and then of course the cushion is going to go in here which she's got the cushion i don't have that so now that i have it set up i'm gonna make a mark right here and i'm gonna make a mark right here because i don't want to round over this edge where it meets but i'm gonna round over everything that's going to be on the exposed part but just not of course like I'm not going to round over these in here because you want that to sit flat and, and flush. I'm still on the fence whether I should do some pocket holes because you, if I do the pocket holes, you're going to see it. And uh, I'm thinking, because I've done a lot of stuff like it, I'm thinking I'm just going to glue it and tack it with brads because it's going to be dark stain on this and it's going to hide the brad. And once that glue dries, this thing ain't going to come apart. That way you don't see any screw holes or anything like that. So basically that's what I'm gonna do now that I got it mocked up is I'm gonna round all these edges that's gonna be exposed over. I'm gonna take a little pencil mark and make a mark so I'll know which ones to mark, which ones to round over, which ones not to. And then I'm gonna stain every bit of it and then we'll come back and put it together. Okay, I'm gonna show you the other stuff of what I bought. These are the legs that I got. They're like 10 bucks a piece, go figure. I should have just made them myself. So I got four legs. This oak is, which of course is mission oak. I've never used it, but uh, it's got some type of gloss sheen to it. So that's, that's the color stain that we're gonna go with that. Believe it or not, that can of stain right there was $15. Then I'm gonna mount these to the bottom I'm gonna mount these to the bottom, which is what these little screw things right here are gonna mount into and make it a little bit easier. I can't remember how much they were. And then they have hardwood floors in their house. So uh, I bought these, these are the Scotch, whatchamacallit, but they're, they're the little grippies. And uh, that way you can probably get one or two on the bottom of that. That way when they sit it down, if the dogs run and jump in the bed, it'll help grip and it won't slide the thing across the floor like it's sitting on ice. But anyhow, so like I said before, I'm gonna start staining everything, staining the legs. I'm getting ready to double down. I'm getting ready to fire up the CNC machine and try to do two projects at one time. So when that thing gets to running, I'm not gonna be able to talk much. But anyhow, so let me go ahead and get started on the staining. Okay, so here's where we're at now. I finally, this took a while waiting for it to dry, but I got all of it stained and I went ahead and took, put two coats of polyacrylic on it. So pretty much it's done. 
the finish work is done on it, just sand it down. All I gotta do is assemble it. So what I'm doing is, let me show you here. I bought these little Dumaflaches right here at Lowe's so that these can screw into them. So basically, how I'm gonna line them up is I came over, if you can see this mark, I came over and marked two inches and then came from this corner and mark, marked it where it's two inches. You see the first dot, then this is the actual two inch mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick, make sure this is on camera. I'm gonna stick that screw hole over that dot, that two inch dot, and then, then just kind of eyeball it. That way it'll somewhat be in the same ballpark. So I've already, I've already got this one and I've got this one and you can see my dot for this one. So basically I'm gonna come over here and trying to do this looking through the camera of the phone sucks all right so i got this one so looking at it you can tell they're fairly even so that's how i'm going to do it i'm going to plant that first screw and then kind of i'll probably measure from here and then here to make sure it's perfectly centered but it really doesn't matter nobody's going to see that because at the end of the day this piece is going to screw in and cover the whole bracket anyway so any hoot I'm gonna go ahead and get those screwed in and this, it, this little set just comes with uh, Phillips head screws and I've already checked it. Luckily, they will not go through, as you can see. So that's a good thing. But as uh, far as pre-drilling, I doubt I'm gonna do it because this stuff is so far away from the edge, I, it shouldn't split. So I'm gonna try one just to make sure if it looks like it's gonna split, then I'll pre-drill a hole. I'll, I'll pre-drill all the holes before I do it. Yeah, let me go ahead and get them boogers put in there. Okay, so I got all the little brackets mounted. So now, it seems stupid, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the screws out. And, because now they're already done, I'm gonna take all the screws out, because when I flip this thing over and start putting the sides on it, I'm gonna need it to sit flush to the table to help me get it all lined up. If I leave these on it, then it's gonna be a quarter of an inch high and it's not gonna meet flush with this. But this was a lot easier to do before I put all these tall rails on it. So now, once I get it all together, I can flip it over, the holes are already there and they'll screw in pretty quick and easy. So now I'm gonna take these off and we're gonna start the assembly process. So I'm gonna be using tight bond two. I normally use three, but I'm out of it. So basically I got these two pieces, they're loose. They're just here to help me line up this outside piece. So basically now that I got that lined up, I'm gonna lay this down. Actually, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna run a bead of glue. Along the edge of this. And then I'm also, I can move this stuff. Cause I opted to do this with just glue and nails. So I'm gonna put a bead of glue on the inside. I'm gonna take the old finger dinger and smear it in. This is what I was talking about staining it beforehand because you'll never get all that little glue off to where it won't mess up the stain. Anyhow, and just wipe it off on the workbench somewhere. Cause you can see by looking at this workbench, I really care about the top of it. So then I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna just kinda blot this down because I don't want it to go above the sight line, which is about, about a finger width. You just want it smooth. All right, so I'm gonna put this piece of wood back here. Put this one back here. Make sure my surface is flat, and I'm an idiot because I just wiped the glue again and I got it on those fingers. Anyway, look, I'm tired. It's hot, miserable out in this garage. All right, so let's squeeze all this stuff together because we wanna make sure we got a good seat. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these back so they don't hit the glued edges. I got a Brad gun, Brad Niller, and I'm using an inch, and I think it's an inch and a quarter brads. So I'm just gonna tack one or two just to hold it and make sure I don't miss. 
Alright, that's good. Okay, I'm getting this there. Okay, so we got that part. Now, I'm going to move these out of the way, set these on my seat and see. Then, let's make sure I didn't miss on the bottom. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and shoot some more breads in it. Put about six, six in it. All right, now I'm gonna spin this booger around. And then I'm going to repeat the exact same process, but I'm going to get a clean paper towel over here and I'm going to wipe off that glue before it starts drying. I'm going to wipe off this glue right here. So just bear with me. I ain't going to bore you to death with what, making me watch doing this whole thing. But anyway, when I get ready to do the two big long pieces, I'll cut the camera back All on. All right, now we're ready for the front. So let me grab that board. Let me make sure this is the front. No, this is the back. Let me grab the other one. All right, now we're ready for the back. Alright, because that's my front. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, make sure it fits, should, nice and snuggy. So, let me move this out the way, and I'm going to tilt this up and do the same thing. I'm going to put a bead of glue as best I can without it coming off, along with that, and then I'm going to smear it in. some dripping I don't want that but I will tell you one thing once me going ahead and adding that polycrylic to it it sure makes the glue clean up a lot easier all right so we got that done now what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be the front side so I'm gonna put a bead of glue right here just like I did on the other just kind of mash it down a little bit because you don't want it to go too high Let's see. Now, now that I got that there, I'm going to run a bead of glue on each end. It'll go kind of heavy. Wipe that off before it dries. And then another bead of glue. All right, now I'm gonna get a bunch of squeeze out on that one. So, all right, so now I'm gonna work this thing in here, just like so, line it up, glue your fingers and all. Seems like it kind of makes a mess, but it'll, 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 it'll all clean off just like that right there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it with a couple brads. ones watching this, I know I'm going to have some naysayers. They're going to be like, whoa, you're putting that thing, thing together with just glue and breads? I'm going to tell you what. I do a lot of things with just nothing but glue and breads. And you let the glue dry like it's supposed to. It's like I said in the previous part of the video, it dries harder than wood. I built, if you go back on my channel and you look at that cedar chest cooler that I built, that entire... That entire cedar chest is built, that cooler thingamajiggy, whatever you want to call it, is built out of nothing but glue and breads. And that thing is still on my deck over there on the corner, and it's still going strong. And it even holds the weight of a full cooler. Ice, water, the whole nine. But anyway, so, now I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me grab this piece. Lowe says their premium wood is not free. There's a knot. They lie. So I'm going to turn it to the inside. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and do the exact same thing and then glue it and shoot it with the brads and then we'll be ready to put the feet on the bottom. And now it's together. 
as you can see, I'm going to have to come back and stain this, which I'm going to sand some of this down because that's some runoff glue. And uh, stain the edges, make the bottom look just as good as the top. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and put these feet back on. So uh, I'll go ahead and speed this up, speed the video up from right here, and then uh, go ahead and get all these screws in. And for the ones that are wanting to know, the inside dimensions are 17 and a half inches deep and 34 and a half inches long. So if you, like I said, she's already got a cushion. I wished I had it, but I don't have that. So the cushion is going to be, have to be 34 and a half by 17 and a half. And uh, that's that. So. That's the project done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back over there to the CNC machine and finish this flag that I'm doing. All right, so that's going to be the end of this. Like I said, I don't have a cushion to be able to put in. I wished I did. So I'll throw somewhere in the video, if you've already watched it, if you actually made it all the way to the end, I'll throw a picture of the actual online, what it looks like. But anyhow, the reason they wanted this size, now like I said, I got $142 tied up into it all together because wood is like, stupid high right now and uh i, I want to say the smaller version of this was 175 195 give or take a few and uh she wanted this actual custom size because she's got two dogs there they she's got one of these that are at her normal house and both of her dogs lay in it together but they bought a lake house and she wants to put this in at the lake house so the dogs can have somewhere to sleep because you if y'all are like me my dog is a member of my family. He's just like one of my kids. But anyway, even though sometimes I want to get a hold to his tail because he bites everybody. But anywho, that's going to be the end of this video. If y'all watched it all the way in, thank you for sticking it out with me. I'm sorry it's been so long since I put out a actual woodworking video. And it's, it's, it's all because of the price of lumber. And uh, we all know the price of everything is going up. But I did get a chance while I was building this to knock out two flags for people that I wanted. I actually, I've got three more that I got to do and I think I have just enough lumber to do that but anyhow thank you for watching you guys have a nice day it's hot as all get out up in this shop as you can see I'm I look like a fire hydrant I'm so red but anyhow thank you for watching if you got any questions shoot me a comment I'll do my best to answer them and like and subscribe if you choose to do that too because it really helps a brother out but anyhow y'all have a good one we'll catch you on the next video hopefully it won't be six months from now